Hi guys, it's Rachel and welcome back to my channel for our Kawaii Suit World Holiday Extravaganza, kind of, I don't know. I'm just going to try to post as many videos as I can for the holidays because I have so many different ideas and today we are making this giant gingerbread girl cake. I think she is super cute and the gingerbread recipe is really good too. It's all nice and dense and moist and it's just perfect in this recipe. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do so because I have lots more holiday videos coming your way. And now without further ado, let's get started. First off, in your stand mixer, you'll need two sticks of softened butter. Then I'm going to pour in a cup of sugar and just let that get nice and light and fluffy. Once that's combined, just turn your mixer to low speed. And then I'm going to crack in two eggs and let that all mix through. Then I'm going to pour in two cups of molasses. It's definitely a lot of molasses in this recipe, but that's what makes it taste so good. Gives it a really nice deep, dark, gingerbready flavor. Then in a separate bowl, add in five cups of flour. It is a lot of flour, but we're making a lot of cake today. Then I'm going to add in three teaspoons of baking soda. That's the same thing as one tablespoon, but I didn't realize that until I looked it up later. I'm also gonna add in a tablespoon of cinnamon, along with two teaspoons of ginger, a teaspoon of cloves, and a teaspoon of salt. Then I'll grab my whisk and mix that all through. Once that's combined, you're just going to slowly add that in with your wet ingredients. Just mix it in nice and slow so the flour doesn't go everywhere. And the batter is going to be really thick at this point, almost like a cookie dough, but we are going to thin it out with two cups of hot water now. And that should thin out the batter really nicely. Now we're going to pour this into a 13 by 9 inch pan that I have just greased and lined with parchment paper. Then I'll just tap out any air bubbles. And we're going to bake that off at 350 for about an hour. Once it comes out of the oven, it should look like this and it'll smell amazing too. And then I'm just going to take that out from the pan. Then once the cake is cooled, I'll just grab a serrated knife and go ahead and level off the cake. Just do your best here. I didn't level this off perfectly evenly, just because leveling cakes is really not my forte. For some reason, I just can't seem to eyeball it very well. So here you can see my attempt at that. But I did touch it up after I cut out the gingerbread man. Speaking of our gingerbread man, you can grab this template from my website, and I'll have that link down below. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out our gingerbread girl now. And then once I finish that, I'm just going to go ahead and cut away these scraps. At this point, I'm just going to transfer my cake to a cake stand. This is the rotating kind, which makes it super easy to decorate the cake. And I'll just go ahead and dollop on some tan buttercream frosting. And just spread that out with my offset spatula. We're just going to start off with a crumb coat here, just to lock in any of those crumbs. Then once you have it nice and smooth, just pop that off into the fridge for about 15 minutes just so the crumb coat can firm up. And once it's all good to go, just add on your final layer of frosting. To make sure it gets fully covered, I like to use a piping bag and just pipe on an even layer. That way you know you have enough frosting to cover the cake. And I'll just smooth that out too. This takes a little bit of time to get it nice and evenly coated, but it's super cute and totally worth it in the end. Don't forget to get these sides covered as well. And I also like to dip my offset spatula in some hot water. That way it makes it a lot easier to smooth out the surface of the cake, kind of melts the frosting a little bit. And then once I finish that, I'm just going to transfer my cake to a serving plate. Or I would use a serving plate, but I don't really have a serving plate big enough for this, so I just used a cutting board. And now it's time for the decorations. I'm starting off with the eyeballs here, and I'm using some black fondant. I'm just going to press on some little white dots too, just to make this look extra cute. Then we can pop those onto our cake. Give them a little press down once you've got the placement right. And I'm also going to pop on a little smile here. This is just some black fondant that I'm using. It's a little bit hard to place it if the fondant is still a little bit soft. As you can see, the smile came out a little bit lopsided at first, but I just fixed it with a toothpick. And then I'm going to use some white frosting to just add on some little icing decorations. Makes them look super cute and festive. Then I'll take some hot pink fondant and just make a bow. I'm just starting off by forming two triangles. Then I'm going to use a toothpick to add on some bow detail. And I'll stick them together with some water. Then as the final detail, I'll just pop a dot in the center. And that's all there is to it for the bow. So I'm just gonna place that onto my cake. And then to finish it all off, I'll grab some little heart buttons that I made out of fondant and I'll just press those onto the cake. And now your cute little gingerbread girl cake is finished, and all that's left to do is take a bite. 
Alright guys, our gingerbread girl cake is finished now and I think it looks super cute and the cake is so tasty too. There was a bunch of scraps from this cake that I kind of want to use to make cake pop, but they're also so tasty that I might just end up like eating all of them. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because I post two new videos every week. You can also follow me on social media at Kawaii Sweet Eats and then check out my website over at kawaiisweetworld.com for the full recipe and I'll see you guys all very soon. Bye guys!